You've always wanted to be a pirate, but today you're actually setting sail and leaving dry land for good. All you have to your name is a simple sailboat, some provisions, and a mysterious map that you hope will lead you to the One Piece, the famous lost treasure of Gold Roger. But being a pirate isn't all fun and games, and you're not the only one headed for the Grand Line. If you're going to make it to that treasure alive, you'll have to face off against some of the toughest pirates in all the four seas. And unless you have a loyal crew or a snail phone to call for reinforcements, you'll have to fight them yourself. Batten down the hatches, mateys! This is how you might be able to defeat the weird and wacky pirates of One Piece. Before we start the video, we're only going to include the characters featured in the East Blue Saga, that is, the first 12 books of the manga, which have since been adapted into the first 60 episodes of the anime and the first season of the live-action series. Why? Well, One Piece is made up of over a hundred books at this point, and the anime has over a thousand episodes. If we covered every pirate from the franchise, we'd be here all day. If you want a part two, let us know down in the comments. Since they're the main characters, let's start off your swashbuckling misadventure with the Straw Hat Pirates themselves. The crew of the Going Merry consists of Usopp, Nami, Sanji Vin Smoke, Roronora Zoro, and leading this band of oddballs, the ship's captain, Monkey D. Luffy. They're far from the most experienced or most powerful pirates out there. In fact, they're rookies at this old pirate thing, just like you. And if you beat them up, you'll get to claim the Going Merry, which is a lot nicer than the ship you already have. So let's go through the strengths and weaknesses of each Straw Hat pirate. First up is Usopp, the crew sniper. Usopp is a crack shot whose weapon of choice is a slingshot that he loads with incendiary projectiles called Firebird Stars. So if you're going to take on Usopp, make sure you aren't hiding too close to any barrels of rum gunpowder, or dynamite because that would definitely end badly. While Usopp is a great fighter at long range, he's also a notorious coward. If closed the distance, he'd more than likely run away than fight back. Next is Nami, the ship's navigatrix. Nami was a cat burglar before she joined the Straw Hat crew, and she isn't just an expert at reading and drawing maps, she's also deadly with a bow staff. Nami's greatest strength is her cunning nature. If you want to beat Nami, you'll have to make sure not to fall for any of her tricks. A good rule of thumb is if you think she's flirting with you, there's a good chance she's actually about to knock you out with her bow staff and steal your keys. Now, we could stand here forever and speculate on whether Zoro or Sanji is the better fighter. Greater minds than us have spent years looking for the answer, but the undeniable fact is both of them are probably better fighters than you. Zoro is a master swordsman who fights with three swords, one in each hand and one in his mouth. Before joining the Straw Hats, he was a legendary pirate hunter, and very few people who ended up on the wrong side of his katanas lived to tell the tale. Sanji, meanwhile, is an expert kickboxer. Before he was a pirate, he worked as a waiter and a line cook at Baratai Restaurant, where this unique fighting style allowed him to lay down the law on unruly customers while still holding a plate of food in each hand. Sanji's hyper-specialization could prove to be a big weakness if you know how to exploit it. Since his fighting style is all kick-based, he'd have a harder time defending his head and shoulders against attacks, so if you're fast enough, you could try to get him in a headlock. Alternatively, if you want to take a more psychological approach, Sanji is a notorious womanizer who is easily distracted by female attention and refuses to engage in combat with women on principle. So, if you aren't a girl already, maybe you could try disguising yourself as one. If you give a convincing performance, Sanji will give up trying to kick your butt and will probably ask you out for a date instead. Zoro, on the other hand, is more of an all-rounder. Even in situations where he doesn't have his swords, he can take out a whole bar full of marine cadets. If you can attack him from behind, you might have more of a chance, especially since the third sword in his mouth would reduce the degree to which Zoro could turn his head. But your chances are still pretty grim. Fortunately, Zoro has one very notable weakness. He has a really awful sense of direction. Zoro is constantly making wrong turns, and the other Straw Hat pirates often have to stop midway through their latest adventure to double back and find him. So instead of fighting Zoro, your best tactic might be run away. Lead him through the nearest town square or thick grove of trees and take a bunch of sharp turns one after another. Zoro will lose track of where you went, get frustrated, and go back to the ship or maybe to the nearest bar to get a drink. And of course, the leader of the Straw Hats himself, Monkey D. Luffy. Unlike the rest of his crew, Luffy has special powers that he gained from eating a devil fruit. Devil fruits are a rare type of fruit found scattered around the world of One Piece, which gives whoever eats them a superpower. In Luffy's case, eating the gum gum fruit made him super stretchy and resistant to damage. But the power comes at a cost. All devil fruit eaters have a shared weakness, seawater. They lose their ability to swim, and being splashed with seawater makes their powers temporarily useless. So right off the bat, you'll have a better chance in a fight with Luffy if you drop a bucket of seawater on his head. 
but if that isn't feasible, Luffy has one other weakness, heat. Luffy isn't just stretchy and as resilient as rubber, he is literally made of rubber, and rubber turns brittle in high temperatures, meaning that if it got hot enough, Luffy would lose his elasticity, so maybe the best way to ensure your victory against him would be to take a bite of the Flame Flame Fruit, another devil fruit that gives you fire-based powers. Sure, having seawater as your weakness would be pretty inconvenient for a pirate, but given how many pirates in One Piece have devil fruit powers, it seemingly hasn't stopped anybody before. Luffy is resistant to bullets and bludgeoning weapons, but he can still be cut, so once you've leveled a playing field with either water or fire magic, you might be able to best him in a sword fight. But really, why would you want to do all that? Luffy's a pretty easygoing guy. If you explained your situation to him, he'd probably tell you it was no problem. He might even let you just join his crew. So that's the straw hats out of the way. But what about some of the other not-so-nice pirates in the East Blue? How would you fare against them? Let's start with one of the earliest enemies that the Straw Hats faced in their journey, Buggy the Clown. This flashy fool might look silly, but he's no joke. He's the captain of a crew of circus freaks, and he's not going to let anyone stand in his way when it comes to getting the One Piece. His preferred weapons are throwing knives, and his crew uses specialized cannonballs called Buggy Balls, which are much more destructive than a standard cannonball. If a Buggy Ball hits you, you're pretty much done for so your first order of business is to duck and cover behind the sturdiest structure you can find. And if that isn't overkill enough for you, one of Buggy's crewmates is a trained lion named Richie. But don't worry, surviving a lion attack is pretty simple. In theory, lions, much like dogs and bears, will hesitate to attack you if you don't show fear. So when Buggy's lion comes barreling out of the big top toward you, resist the urge to run, wave your arms in the air, and yell as loud as you can. If you survive that, confronting the genius jester himself face to face won't be any less perilous, because Buggy's got his own devil fruit power. He ate the Chop Chop fruit, which gave him the power to detach and reattach his body parts at will. So right off the bat, swords are useless against him, just like with Luffy dousing him in seawater will negate his ability, although that'll be pretty difficult if he splits himself into a hundred pieces. Fortunately, Buggy's got another weakness. He can't rebuild himself if his body parts are sufficiently restrained. So if you can get enough rope, some fishing nets, and a whole lot of empty boxes, you can catch and contain all of the individual buggy bits until he doesn't have any body left to hit back with. But if all that sounds too complicated, Buggy's also got a psychological weakness, his ego. All Buggy really wants is attention, so maybe if you flatter him enough, he'll just let you live. Just don't make any comments about his nose. Next up is Kuro, the captain of the Black Cat Pirates. Kuro is a tactical genius and one of the scariest pirate captains in the East Blue. His nickname is Kuro of the Hundred Plans because he's always two steps ahead. He fights with a signature pair of five clawed gloves and is gifted with borderline super speed. Kuro can run as fast as 90 kilometers an hour, which is twice as fast as Usain Bolt's top speed. Before you ask, no, Kuro did not take a bite of the Zoom Zoom fruit or anything. He was just born like that. If you want to beat Captain Kuro, you have to get a little creative. One major downside to super speed as an ability is momentum. The laws of physics state that a moving object will continue moving until stopped by an outside force, and the faster the object moves, the greater the force required to completely stop. On top of that, it takes longer to come to a complete stop. So if someone is running as fast as Kuro and doesn't notice an obstacle in their way fast enough, like say, a concealed punji stick pit? or a very thin tripwire, he won't be able to avoid it. These kinds of traps would have the added bonus of psyching Kuro out to a degree. Kuro takes himself extremely seriously and always takes it very badly when one of his plans fails, even though it rarely happens. If you were able to combine well-concealed booby traps with acting as unpredictably as possible, you might get him to lose his composure and slip up in the fight. So you made peace with the straw hats, you cut Buggy down to size, and you delivered Kuro a dose of seriously bad luck. Maybe this pirating thing is easy after all. Well, we got some bad news for you. The next pirate you're going to face in your journey to the Grand Line is Don Krieg, captain of the Krieg Pirates. Krieg isn't just extremely well armed, he's also a dirty rotten cheater. Krieg is a whole fleet worth of guns concealed in his nigh indestructible bulletproof armor, including two shoulder cannons, a poison grenade launcher, a net gun, and a flamethrower. He's also no slouch in the melee department. He's got a collapsible battle spear hidden in one of his shoulder pads and he wears a pair of diamond-spiked knuckle dusters. There's no chance of appealing to this guy's honor, since he'd be the first to tell you that he has none. He'll kick you when you're down, he'll shoot you in the back, pretend to surrender to get your guard down, whatever underhanded thing he can think of doing to win. 
Unless you have your own bulletproof armor and a poison antidote handy, you don't stand much of a chance against Don Krieg. However, you might be able to reason with his crew. In addition to being a cheat and a sore loser, Krieg is also a truly terrible boss. He keeps his crew in line with fear and treats them as expendable, even once sinking one of his own ships to gain an advantage, so the Krieg pirates naturally don't feel a lot of loyalty to their captain. Talk to enough of them about it and you might be able to convince them to stage a mutiny. Now you're into really dangerous territory. People have heard that on top of all your other victories you single-handedly got the Krieg pirates to unionize and now you're well on your way to entering the Grand Line. And the more infamous you get, the more chance there is that you'll run afoul of the Seven Warlords of the Sea. The Seven Warlords are just as scary as they sound. The group is made up of seven extremely powerful pirates who brokered a deal with the world government to cancel their bounties and become privateers who do mercenary work on behalf of the marines. Most of the warlords are thankfully absent in the East Blue, but unfortunately the one you do run into in this part of your adventure is Dracul Mihawk. Mihawk holds the title of world's greatest sword fighter, who wields a gigantic black longsword called Yoru. Though if he doesn't think it'd be fair to use Yoru against you, he might choose to fight you with the tiny blade he keeps hidden in the cross pendant around his neck. Unlike other villains that you've gone up against so far, Mihawk is notoriously calm, cool, and level-headed under pressure, so appeals to Ego or attempts to psych him out will likely fail. And given that he is good enough with the sword to cleave a bullet in half mid-air, you probably won't be able to take him in a fight. However, the situation is not totally helpless. Mihawk is a consummate gentleman who follows all the proper rules of dueling etiquette. According to the widely accepted Code Duello, while your opponent might die later from their injuries, dueling with the explicit intent to kill is highly unsportsmanlike. A gentleman sword fighter like Mihawk would be more likely to fight until his opponent was injured enough to need a break. As long as you're a good sport and fight fairly, Mihawk will let you survive. Just make sure you get to a doctor pretty soon afterward. So, you take some time out of your pirate adventure to recover from the injuries you sustained in the duel with Mihawk. You lost a lot of blood, but at least you get to say that you went toe-to-toe -to -toe with a warlord of the sea. Everything's smooth sailing from here to the Grand Line, but out of nowhere a crew of half-fish, half-human creatures surround your boat, and they don't look friendly. That's right, it turns out you just crossed into the territory of the Arlong Pirates. The main members of this crew are Hotchan the Octopus, Kurobi the Manta Ray, Chu the Archerfish, and their captain, a terrifying sawfish named Arlong. The Arlong pirates are after the One Piece too, and they refuse to be shown up by any humans, as they think fish people are the superior species. Considering that the One Piece world is covered in even more water than the real world, they might actually have a point. So let's go through all their strengths and weaknesses. As a group, the fishmen all share a weakness of being dried out if caught on land for too long. But since they've caught you on your boat, you're out of luck in that area. Fishmen are also resistant to fire damage, since they're always just wet enough to not set alight. So remember that flame flame fruit we suggested to eat a while back when you were fighting Luffy? Yeah, that won't be very useful at all in this fight. Now let's take a look at the individual crew members of the Arlong Pirates. Let's start with Hachan. As an octopus, he's got six arms with extremely strong and flexible muscles. This makes him a formidable opponent in a sword fight, since he can use six swords at once. He can also spit octopus ink, which he can use to temporarily blind his opponent, so make sure you got goggles on hand before you fight him. Despite his physical strength, Hot Chan isn't exactly the smartest member of the Arlong crew, and he easily gets frustrated. So if you can avoid all six of his arms, it won't be too hard to outmaneuver him. Next up is Kurobi, who is a level 40 black belt in Fishman Karate. He's especially deadly underwater, where he can use his fins on his arms to swim at devastating speeds and turn on a dime. Kurobi might not usually use a weapon, but he makes up for it with his confidence and sheer cruelty, and as a manta ray, his skin is made up of thick, tooth-like scales that make him resistant to gunfire. His one real weakness is that, as a pretty big guy, he is slower on land than he is in the water. He's also got such a thick neck that he can't fully turn his head. A fast enough opponent could take advantage of that weakness by striking quickly and from behind. But watch out, if he gets the chance, he'll drag you into the water to give himself a home turf advantage. The next Arlong pirate is Chu. His cutesy sounding name is a kissing sound effect in Japanese, but you probably wouldn't want to kiss this pirate. As an archerfish, Chu's special attack involves spitting water with the force of a pistol shot. So as long as he has something to drink, he has a weapon. He is the most cool-headed of the Arlong crew, but he's also the least physically strong, preferring to use his ranged attack over engaging in close combat. He's also the only member of the crew who might be less than fireproof. 
Chu is known to have a fondness for whiskey, which he can use as ammunition instead of water. With a match or some dynamite or one of Usopp's fire stars, you could set Chu alight. Alternatively, you could subdue him by blocking his gill slits. Archerfish use their water spitting attack by filling their mouths with water and rapidly contracting their gills. So if you could get on his back and put your hands over the gill slits, you might be able to stop him. Then there's Arlong himself, he's a sawfish, which though they are sometimes also called carpenter sharks, they are actually a type of ray. So like Kurobi, Arlong is super fast in the water with tough scales that make him highly resistant to damage. He's also very strong, able to pick up houses in the village he terrorizes and literally flip them. Though he is a ruthless pirate who hates humans, he cares deeply for his fellow fishmen, meaning that seeing you attack his crewmates would likely send him into a rage. His most notable weapon is his distinctive serrated sword, though he rarely needs to use it. Arlong typically prefers to fight with his nose, which has rows of teeth on both sides. He also uses the teeth inside his mouth to fight, either by simply biting or in some cases ripping them out to use like hand-sized bear traps. Let's not kid ourselves here, you probably do not stand much of a chance against Arlong. But if you want to take a wild saving throw, here are a couple of attacks you could try. First, using his discarded teeth against him. This is a technique that Luffy used where he pushed the teeth into his own gums and bit Arlong on the shoulder. But that's probably not very feasible without gum gum powers, so you might try holding the teeth between your fingers while you punch. Secondly, you could try a strong uppercut to the nose. The top and sides of a sawfish's nose are very strong, but the underside is a little more sensitive due to being the location of the fish's electroreceptors. This is a sensory organ unique to sharks, rays, and skates, which allow them to smell electric currents, helping them to hunt and navigate underwater. This is also why common advice in a shark attack is to aim for the nose, hitting the right spot will overwhelm its electroreceptors. So, a strong punch to the underside of Arlong's nose might discombobulate him for long enough that you could potentially make a run for it. Though it's not really clear where you'd go in the East Blue that Arlong wouldn't be able to quickly catch up with you. Your only real hope of surviving a run-in with Arlong and his crew might be appealing to his greed. Like most pilots, Arlong loves money, and much of his power and influence comes from running extortion rackets in various island villages. If you've earned any pirate booty over the course of your voyage, you better offer it up to him as protection money. And while you're at it, you might as well give him your treasure map too. If he's satisfied with the offering, he might just leave you alone for now. Gold Roger's treasure might have eluded you this time, but some people have said knowledge is the greatest treasure of all. So why not take a bite of the sub sub fruit and gain all the powers of an infographics show subscriber? While you're at it, check out you vs Sonic.exe. How could you defeat and survive it? Or check out this video instead.